unsettling mm -hmm. for the first. Who do you think has it harder? Do you, that, who do you think has it harder? A really unattractive woman or an unattractive man? Who has it harder? Mm. Or are they the an, same? An, unattractive man. But don't you think it, I think it's unattractive women and I'll tell you why I think that mm. because with an unattractive man he can find a way to compensate whether it's through money or humor with an unattractive woman she can't even walk into a club without feeling money like or crap. humor yeah money or humor like, so or both. not all men are, are the rich well then think practice a few it. jokes so, you'll get so, far with women trust me uh, so there's a lot of women nowadays that are even people are far more selfish now so should someone be like Andrew Tate to be happy to have a good life <laughs> I think he would say yes. I think he would definitely say yes. But um, personally, I think I, whenever I listen to anybody who's doing a podcast, I try and listen it, to it from the viewpoint of a child. Would my parents be happier if they followed this person's advice? Now, in some ways, absolutely. Andrew says a lot of things that definitely would make a child's life easier if mom and dad listened to it. But in some ways, when you're telling men that they could have multiple women or when you're uh, suggesting that, you know, body count only matters for women, and it's like, would the child benefit from a dad that has multiple women and has all of them pregnant? I don't believe children benefit from that advice. And therefore, yes and no is my answer. He might see this, so I have to be diplomatic. <laughs> okay, man, I still want to work with you. This. So, yeah, so I still want to work with you. Love you, mean it, right? Okay, so. Right. Um, so what's like your take on keeping people or, or creating this attraction between the two? You know? How to create an attraction between yeah. men and women? Yeah. I think how to create attraction is knowing the difference between what you're used to and what you need. And what I mean by that is if you've had bad experiences, either in relationships or in your childhood, what you might be used to is somebody being inconsistent, being nice to you one minute, difficult the next, chaotic, blah, blah, blah. And that's what you're used to. So you go to men that are a bit inconsistent or women that are inconsistent. But what you actually need is stability, peace, and um, predictability. So instead of focusing on all the good things you like in someone, focus on your deal breakers. What would make it impossible for this relationship to work? And if they have even one deal breaker, don't be with them. So what I mean by that is say, for example, I'm seeing somebody and he's got a million great traits. He's nice, he's got a good job, he's handsome, but the deal breaker might be he's not loyal. Even though he's got a million good things, that one deal breaker will keep resurfacing until the relationship breaks. Loyalty is everything. At the end of the day, it's trust. Yeah, it's everything. It's respect as well. Mm, it's respect. Trust. And yeah, it's everything. Yeah. So that's why I just think whatever the deal breakers are with a person, use that to navigate whether you're going to work with this person rather than all the things you love. So you might fall in love with a woman and she's wonderful, she's great, this, that and the other, but you don't like the picture she posts on Instagram. That's a deal breaker to some men. If that's your deal breaker, don't worry about all the things you love. Think, Focus on that think can I cope with this in the long run if the answer is no halos don't bother so you as a psychologist mm -hmm. would say uh, mind over heart absolutely for both men and women so you don't believe in this fantasy that they try to paint it like oh you know you find your soulmate yeah, oh my um, god oh my god I'm gonna find my soulmate well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think you have those magical connections with people but there's the difference between having somebody you can love and somebody who you can build a life with and life partners involve stability not chemistry and so uh, yes there's going to be people that sweep you off your feet and you mm. have this magical moment but you can't build a life on that you need to meet somebody who you can build a compatible lifestyle with and so I think focus more on that than the chemistry and all the love and all that stuff which is really hard to do when you're surprised when you're surrounded by instagram pictures of people being madly in love if someone doesn't have that chemistry uh, uh -huh. In their relationship, then they might they'll get bored. Yeah, they might get bored. Unfortunately, you know what? I do you know, think that's true. Or whatever, I right? do think that's true. Unfortunately, before back in the day, people didn't expect to be constantly stimulated by their partner. Mm. If they got bored, it's just like how you get bored with your siblings. Like you're not, you don't, you just, you just still chill with them. Yeah. You can't chuck them out the window when you're just when you were bored. <laughs> no, with my, yalla. Like <laughs> sibling. Yeah. yeah. Another one from yeah. that. I'm on the same. <laughs> But that's what siblings, like a family relationships is like, you're not expecting to be madly in love every day, but there's an underlying acceptance of that relationship. In marriages now, people are expecting that chemistry all day, every day, and it's just not realistic. And therefore people replace the person rather than changing their mindset into this is now a family, we're family now. It doesn't mean you lose all connection, but you accept the process that the chemistry goes down after a while. We talked about body count. Did I? Yeah, you, said, you mentioned something. <laughs> yeah, did I? <laughs> you did. Yes. And I wanted to ask you, is it more important for men or women? Men. 
Men? Uh-huh. Why men? I, I, I don't, I don't wait, wait, disagree. Wait, what do you mean? Men's body count matters more. You heard it here first. Men's body count matter more than women's body count. Absolutely. I'll let that sink in. Okay. <laughs> what's, your, what's, okay. Your, what's, your, what's your reason? Okay. Your reason? Okay. What's your reason? There's several reasons. Okay. I'll say it for both right now. When a woman has a high body count, she's essentially emotionally broken. Yeah. That's essentially, it's coming from an emotionally broken place. Maybe she's she, not. Mm, what what do you mean? Maybe like she maybe just stop. Maybe she's just bored. But that boredom is a form of why have you chosen sexuality? It's, it's not an excuse for that. Yeah, it's, yeah. But it is. Yeah. But when you choose sexual gratification, when you're bored, hurt, whatever it is, there's something emotionally um, that needs repairing in that woman. So yes, of course it matters because it shows that there's some trauma in her, some kind of way. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the difference between men and women is men women can choose who they have a baby with. If a woman is sleeping around with lots of men and then one great guy gets her pregnant she's got her life sorted for the rest of her life if a bad guy gets her pregnant she we're now living in a world where women can do whatever they do to children when they don't want them yeah uh that's a different topic so they have that yeah i don't like it but you know um so they have that element of choice so in terms of long-term consequences when it comes to men when they sleep around in order to sleep around you have to drop your standards as a man you have to you can't be sleeping around with 10 15 wife material women some of them have to be girls that are have questionable moral compass so you're dropping your standards now when you every time you drop your standards you get used to low quality women always you get you and you start thinking women are promiscuous you start having trust issues all it takes is getting one of those women pregnant she decides she wants to keep it not only now are you stuck with that woman for the rest of your life you now have to rely on this promiscuous woman to raise your children and the worst thing about that is when you choose a promiscuous low standard woman it gives shame and guilt to a man he's not designed to love a promiscuous woman we can still love a promiscuous man so we can get the father of our kids could be a guy with lots of big body count and we'll still want to be with him men don't want to be with him so they distance themselves from that woman but in the process they're now distancing themselves from that child so that both that child is now suffering from an absent father and a promiscuous mother and that's the risk you run from being a man with a high body count whereas women have have no long-term consequences other than mental ones with high body counts. Same, same, same. Well, she can, she, but she can get rid of the baby that she doesn't want. You can't get rid of a baby. You have no choice in that matter, unfortunately. Uh, Yanni, what they've done. We, when we balance, that means we got rid of the baby. <laughs> when you balance, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, I suppose in America, you can go jail for not being financially there. Yeah, and, true, true. Uh, and even if you can balance, by all means, you can cut. But, you know, there's no human on this planet yeah, that knows that there's a child out there that is being raised by somebody you don't trust and it's got your bloodline in it. And if you're okay with that, that's also a problem. You, yeah, true, as a man, true. are not looking after your kin. That's a, a real problem in your masculinity if that doesn't bother you. So I would say it's far, far more detrimental for men to be sleeping around than women sleeping around. Women sleeping around is mental. Men sleeping around, it is financial, mental, psychological, emotional, everything because you have long-term so consequences. women sleeping around is not emotional? Women sleeping around is traumatic. It's a result of tra- some trauma. And that trauma doesn't have to be extreme. It doesn't have to be like, oh my God, she was you know, attacked as a child. It can simply be she's been hurt or simply be- being that she doesn't have confidence in her looks anymore. So she wants this, that, and the other. It doesn't have to be extreme, but there's some kind of trauma. Why are you laughing? What are you thinking about? Haram. It's not an excuse. You're saying it as if it's like, ah. It's not an excuse. It's not an excuse. When men do it, they're so excited. No, no, no. I, I think anxiety, it's worse. I like, think it's bad for but, both. But, well, I think it's bad what, for both. I feel like, uh, so, and, and this is the thing, right? I feel like the women are a backbone of society because even as a man, you were still born from a woman. They are, yeah. So when a woman is like sleeping around, that's not... But when women sleep around, it's a reflection of what the men in that society have tolerated. Best. You you go to some cultures and, uh, you know, even where I'm from, yeah, I'm from Kashmir. Um, and so in the men in my culture, it, you're not, as a woman, you don't have a choice. It's a beautiful Kashmir. It's so my beautiful. Make sure you guys go to Kashmir. I'm I love from Kashmir. Kashmir yeah, in the Pakistan side, yeah. it's amazing. Food's great as well, by the way. Um, but have you eaten? Uh, yeah, I'll, my, I'll my, neighbor, my neighbor, my mom my neighbor cook was cook Kashmir. Oh, really? From Kashmir, yeah. Okay. Oh, my it's mom is, amazing. yeah, you like it? Okay, perfect. I'll make sure. Uh, Ramadan, Ramadan, I'll do the cook. Yeah, inshallah. Right. Uh, what were we talking about? My ADHD. I don't know. Yeah. What, what were we talking, talking about? What are talking about? Like, 
the like women. women. Uh huh. Right? In my culture, yeah, yeah. Yani, let's take my culture. In my culture, there is not a chance in hell that women could be promiscuous, even if they wanted to, because the men in my culture, impossible. You know, what I've told you a little yeah, bit about yeah, yeah. my dad and my parents and stuff. Impossible, impossible. To this day, my parents, my dad will say to me if I go back to London by 10:30 p.m., where are you? You better be home. There's no going out. There's no nothing like that. If you're wearing something, I know, like I even know, you know, as yeah, I. Yeah, Yeah, and I said, my yeah. neck is a bit low. Yeah. My mum is going to shout at me. And I'm a grown woman. And my, the culture does not I respect allow. That. That's very, yeah, you, I was upset. I was like, please don't feel me like this. But no, he no. was like, don't worry about it. I was like, my mum's going to see it. And even swear words. I, I remember one time I said the F word in, in a jokey way Stuff in Instagram. Like my mum screenshot. Like, I'm t- I know. <laughs> my mum will screenshot, tell my dad. My dad will yell at me. He's not talking. He won't talk to me for a bit. It's not worth it. Yeah. So it's just not worth it. Now, the men in my society don't tolerate that. Nonsense. So, therefore, the women in my society have no choice but to fix up. So, you're throwing that back you, right you, at you. You are saying yeah. that women do this because men tolerate it? Yeah, well, I'm saying you to you, I'm not. No, them. I tell you why. I tell you why. Okay. Women are definitely the backbone of the society, but men are the leaders and they are the core of that house they they do the rules women do the kind of admin men do the rules they're the ceo women are just the admin work right so she we're the receptionist you're the boss now if my the boss is saying you know some woman might not like, agree yeah, with you well that's your I problem he is <laughs> my dad is the ceo yeah, no, of my life to this day a, a lot of a lot of guys won't mind right just like i'm a ceo of course I'm CEO, what's yeah, yeah. <laughs> but some women nowadays they challenge them and feminism <laughs> I get it. Like, yeah. I get it. Like, go work, me, but, do everything, yeah. be you, have ambitions, uh-huh. like, have dreams, uh-huh. pursue them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, someone needs to take charge. Absolutely. And it should be the man. Oh, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Are we all, all getting the- cancelled? No. Yalla, let's all get cancelled. <laughs> it should always be the man. It should okay. always and, and be the man. Why, as a woman, are you saying it's supposed to be? Because, because we don't, we don't a lot respect, of women would disagree with that. Because we don't respect men that allow us to take control of him. Whereas men also don't respect themselves when they let a woman take control of them. Mm. It's just that by design, I don't make the rules. I, mean, I, don't, I'm, I get in trouble for when I talk like this. Mm. I don't make the rules. I don't, I'm not saying I want it like this. It's how so we're designed. So, these are the rules. Like well, biologically. Rules. Biologi- biologically, biologically, biologically. On biological level, because on a like biological level, biological level, when you, especially when women have children, yeah. it's one of the most remarkable experiences because it really shifts gender roles. She becomes so consumed with her child, like obsessed with her child. She doesn't have time to be making decisions of when the bill mm. should be paid, what should be made. She is just so monogamous and loyal to the baby. She hasn't got time to run that admin of the house. And then she's like, can you do this? Can you? She becomes so codependent on the man. She can't even get herself a glass of water when she She's fully like just had baby. She needs that man to take control. So if you don't have a man that can run things, when you get pregnant, you run the risk of being over over exerted and then your child runs a risk of not being It's always been like that from even human way, nature. way back. Yeah, human nature. Yeah, it's human nature. nature. So what I was saying about promiscuous, uh, why men's body count matters more is because if, and why men are in control of women's body count, if you guys, men in general, were like, I don't tolerate promiscuous women, those women that post pictures of themselves naked online stuff would slowly stop doing that because they're like, I can't get a man to be with me. Mm. But instead, every time they post a picture, they have a hundred men from around the world so saying, I'll give you a thousand I'll give you this. doing that because of the validation. Supply and demand. There is no demand for a good woman anymore. A good woman who has, who's cooking, sitting at home, not posting anything on Instagram, will struggle to meet a man. A girl who's posting herself in a thong is getting flown out to Qatar to watch the final. I have an interesting point you did there. See, women, I heard that women, they choose who they want to sleep with. They mm-hmm. have this option to choose and pick. Yeah. Men, they don't have. This option. Mm, do you think that? I most yeah. For a, a lot for a lot no, let's say, a lot of them. Let's say, for a, a high value man, man, it's different. Yeah. A lot of men don't have the option mm. and they end up settling mm-hmm. for the first Who do you think has it harder? Day, do you, the, who do you think uh, has it harder? A really unattractive woman or an unattractive man? Who has it harder? Mm. Or are, are they the un- same? Un- unattractive man. But don't you think it, I think it's unattractive women, and I tell you why I think that. Mm. Because with an unattractive man, he can find a way to compensate, whether it's through money or humor. With an unattractive woman, she can't even walk into a club without feeling money like or crap. humor. Yeah, money or humor. Like, so or both. Not all men are, are the rich. Well, then practice a few it. jokes. So, You'll get so, far with women. Trust me. Uh, so there's a lot of women nowadays that are even not even marginally attractive. Yeah. And then with all the 
Yeah, yeah, we can do a lot. And then they're like, we can get like, a lot. Out of ten. Like, like a solid seven. seven. They're, yeah. like, they're like Miss Universe. Right? Yeah. So, and, and but the, I'm and talking about the, the ones that can't even do that. Like, let's say she's obese or whatever it is. Yeah, but day, it, like, I'm saying the women that are doing that, mm -hmm. it becomes a scam. Yeah, it is this a scam. Is a full scam. Mm -hmm. It is a scam. But do do you th I do think it's a scam. I do think it is a scam. And I think every woman is a bit guilty. I definitely use filters and makeup and all this stuff. I do think it's a scam. Um, but I, at the same time, you know, just like how men will pretend to be a lot more monogamous or committed in the beginning of the relationship to draw you in, and then it's a scam. We all use any kind of it's, it's tr strategies. It's mating strategies. We have to kind of um, exaggerate the existing traits that the man or woman likes to get them. And and so guys with a little bit of money will say they've got a lot of money. Uh, girls with a little bit of looks will show a lot of looks. So it's just, unfortunately, um, scam just society. Just people scamming each other. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's honestly, it's like society. one big scam society. Scam society. Stop for yeah, it is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> Haram. <laughs> Sadio. Yes. We got a question mm -hmm. from the guys. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of arranged marriage? Oh. So welcome to my course on masculinity and in this course not only will I be able to, out, to completely transform your understanding of women but on a more personal level you will enhance your self-esteem, self-respect and your boundaries. The goal of this course is to take a man that has absolutely fantastic intentions, wants to find love, wants to commit, wants to have a good healthy relationship but is finding that he's constantly running into women who are narcissistic, who are disrespectful, who are disloyal now if you are finding that continuously then there must be something in your engagement with women that is causing this what my course will do is look at where this desire, where this problem comes from how to resolve it how to communicate effectively with men and women and how to command respect most importantly how to improve your self-respect and throughout the course you'll be given interactive sessions but with course materials to help you channel and journal your learning so if you are interested in becoming the most masculine version of yourself join today